My name is Marguerite Ross, but many people call me Mary. It's a name I acquired in Academy. And I was born in Quincy, Massachusetts in 1923. I began school in first grade in 1929 when I was six years old. And I have been involved in school every year of my life since then, either as a student or a teacher or a volunteer. And even now, I still go once a week to read a book to the children in the third grade at the Ruth Murdoch Elementary School here at Andrews University. My mother was actually baptized a couple years before I was born. My father did not give his permission. They instructed her or advised her to ask his permission, and he refused it. But she was baptized anyway. And I don't know if you remember, but in those days, Adventist wives did not wear wedding rings. She was uh, up in Vermont at the time, visiting her parents when she was baptized. But she came home without her wedding ring on. There was quite a bit of distress in the family. But my father, for some reason or other, always liked to have me with him. He worked the 3 to 11 shift in the shipyard there south of Boston in Quincy. And my mother and my older brother would be asleep when he came home from work after 11 at night by the time he had taken the trolley car and walked up the hill. It was probably about 11.30. And because my brother had to be in school the next day, they were sleeping, but I was awake. And he would come and get me out of his crib and out of my crib and take me out to the kitchen and I would sit in his arm while he ate a supper. I never remember him putting me back in my bed. <laughs> I suppose I fell asleep there in his arm. So we were very close. And of course, when he was working around before he went to work itself at three, uh, mother would be busy and, and so I would be with him. I knew all the names of his tools long before I knew the, the names of the things in my mother's kitchen because he taught me. If he wanted a keyhole saw, he didn't want me to hand him a carpenter saw. If he needed the tack hammer, he didn't want a ball peen hammer, and so on. So we were very close. And although we, mother and brother and I, went to Sabbath school and church in Boston, we took the streetcar in, um, of course, he never attended. And he died when I was not five and a half. But all those closeness years were very strong in my life and still are. Anyway, we moved up to Vermont to stay with my grandfather who needed care. 
and the only Adventists in the whole city of Barrie, Vermont, were my mother and one old lady. And a few Adventists would come in to, to town on Sabbath. They rented a, a uh, lodge hall where they had a church. And other than that, on Sundays, I went to the Baptist church. My grandparents were Baptists. They, oh, I could even go by myself. Everybody knew who I was because they knew my grandparents. And it was just a, about a walk to walk downtown to go to church. It, and they had Sunday school and Sunday school papers. And I went to the Baptist church without any problem. And in summertime, when we moved to the farm, there was a young Baptist man who had meetings for young people in the Baptist church that wasn't used any other time. And I went to Baptist Vacation Bible School, <laughs> probably two or three summers at least. But then, as I said, we didn't have any high school in our village and I had to go away. And the Adventist minister knew of this little 10th grade school which had just been started down in West Lebanon, New Hampshire. So he advised mother that could make arrangements because his brother lived down there. And so they did, and I went down there, and I did wh what many girls did in those days. Uh, they would stay with a family, take care of the children, wash the dishes, etc. cetera, while they went to high school. And so I did that, and I lived with a family and went to church school. It was my f first experience being in a church school. And the teacher, I was in ninth grade, the teacher taught us all our subjects. Violet May Peak Hall. <laughs> Her maiden name was Peak, P-E-A-K-E. -E. And she had been, as a very young woman, uh, as a missionary in Haiti. She had been teaching down there in Haiti. And of course, she had stories about Haiti to tell us. And she had uh, been there a year or two. And she had also taught in Jamaica. In fact, in Jamaica, she was actually the education person that they sent around to the few schools they had in the island. So she was a very capable person. And so well, she became very well acquainted with us and we with her. But when some kind of problem came up that she wanted to talk about, she would sit down in front of us and talk to us and ask us, well, what do you think? Um, this is the kind of situation. Um, what do you think we should do? That was an amazement to me because I had never been asked. I had always received directions and sometimes orders <laughs> about what was to be done. That was very surprising. She had a marvelous uh, knowledge of Old Testament history, and that was our first Bible class was Old Testament that year. Oh my, she made everything come alive. If we had seen Moses and Noah coming down the street, we would have known which one was Moses and which one was Noah, <laughs> and so on. She made it that graphic, and I never knew for many years 
that when she had her college degree, it was in theology, not an, just a regular bachelor's. And if she had been male, she would have gone into the ministry, of course, but instead she went into teaching. But that's why she knew the Bible so well. Anyway, this, the, uh, that's had a great effect on us. And I went home for a couple months that summer between my 14th and my freshman and sophomore year, grade uh, 9 and 10. And that's, but that is the very last time I ever even slept in my mother's home. Anyway, the next year when I came back, I lived with a different family whose the lady was a new Adventist. The first family I had lived with were not Adventists. And so she was, of course, encouraging to me to, to live a good Adventist life and so on. She didn't talk much about it, but the encouragement was there, just the same. And there was no ninth grade that year, so they put the eighth graders in our classroom. You couldn't pay the teacher for teaching five kids. <laughs> so the eighth graders came in. And in that eighth grade class was a lovely young lady with kind of ginger-colored hair, long curls. And we became quite good friends. And my teacher was knowing that I would need to go away to academy the next year, and she offered to help me. She didn't have much money. They didn't pay teachers too much in those days. Not that they're overpaid now, but they sure paid more. <laughs> anyway, she lived up on third floor in a little two-room apartment, but it was heated by wood. Would I carry the wood for her from the basement up to the wood box? And she would pay me 10 cents an arm load to carry it up. And she left a little pad beside the wood box. And on my way home from school, I would stop and carry up three or four loads and make a mark for each one on the little pad. And when I had earned a couple of dollars, she walked across the river into Vermont <laughs> where there was a bank and took out a little bank account for me. And it says two dollars deposit and three dollars maybe deposit and so on. And the lady I lived with was also, they asked her to be in charge of the the uh, community service is now called, Dorcas called in those days. And so she helped me find some clothes and that uh, could be redone and made a few couple new ones and so on. And at the very end of the school year, I used to stay and help the teacher after school every, every now and again. And she said to me one evening, she said, um, Carlene is going to be baptized. That was my friend in the eighth grade. I said, oh, that's nice. And she said, she'd like for you to be baptized with her. I said, all right, I will. I wonder how many prayers she had said to say the right thing to me 
so that I wouldn't say, no, I don't want to do that. If she had said, well, now, don't you think it's time for you to give your heart to the Lord and, and be baptized as a member, I probably would have said no. But the way she put it was Carleen wanted me to be baptized with her. And I said, all right, I'll do that. So we were baptized together in the Ottaquichi River. <laughs> That's quite a name, isn't it? Indian, I'm sure. Anyway, and I went off to academy thanks to these two ladies my church school teacher and the lady with whom I lived, who became like a foster mother to me. And although her husband wasn't an Adventist, when it came time for me to graduate from the academy, he found out that there was a, a prize if you got the top grade if you were the valedictorian. I think it was a hundred dollars scholarship to go to college. <laughs> Wouldn't do very much these days, would it? And he said, if you get that prize, I will match it. Oh, well, I didn't. I only got second, so. <laughs> well, he said, I'll match it anyway. And so he was responsible for my first two years in college. But he died in the middle of my second year. And so it, when it came to the end of that school year, I was on my own. I turned 20 that summer and I worked in the bindery and it's August already, and I didn't know what's going to happen. I had no money to go to college. I was in the dorm. Anyway, the education superintendent for Southern New England, because I was going to Andrews University, I mean to <laughs> AUC, Atlantic Union College, and he asked the girl he was hiring, do you know anybody else you think could teach? And she said, well, I think Mary Ross could. I don't know why she thought that. I must have had classes with her or something. Anyway, that's what she said. And and so he called me, oh, no, no, I don't want to do that. So when I mentioned this to my boss, he said, well, Mary, what are you going to do? I said, I don't know. Why don't you try it for a year? Oh, I don't want to. This went on every day for a week. And finally, I gave in and I called the education superintendent. Well, he said, I rehired the lady for that school last night. I convinced her. But I have another school in Bridgeport, Connecticut, in the Czechoslovakian church. Well, I probably could have found Czechoslovakia on the map. I knew it was in Europe, but that's about all I knew about it. So, all untrained. 20 years old, with no other home to go to, I went to Bridgeport. But the Lord had prepared the way. There was a lovely Slovak lady there who became a dear, dear, dear friend and saw to it that I survived. She was so good to me. That's how I came to be teaching in Bridgeport. I taught there two years. And then 
I was sent back to the very school where he had tried to hire me to teach at first, <laughs> and I didn't want to. By that time, the conference would send me to summer school. So between my first and second year, they sent me to summer school. And then uh, I had to take education classes, whether I wanted to or not. That's what they were paying for. And so gradually, uh, I had then I had another year of scholarship to go to to uh, another year of college. And then one morning he called me and he said, uh, "You're not going to summer school this morning. I mean this summer. You're going to Berrien Springs, Michigan." Well, I had never been west of New York State in my life. I knew where Michigan was, but he said, we're sending you to Michigan. Uh, they're having a committee out there. They're working on materials for a third grade reader. And the lady they would like to send doesn't want to go because she's in the middle of her master's degree. So you're going. So I came out here. When I got off the train at Niles, I saw it said inside, New York Central System. I said, oh, thank you, Lord, I can always get home. <laughs> so I spent eight weeks here and went back to Massachusetts to teach another year. And the second summer, they said, well, you have to go back again. The lady still doesn't want to go, and so you're to go back. And so I came back. By that time, the lady who was in charge of the committee was, of course, the uh, head of all elementary teacher education here on campus uh, in, in Berrien Springs. It was Emmanuel Missionary College in those days. It wasn't Andrews University yet. And she was in charge of all elementary um, student teaching. She, was in she taught most of the methods classes. She was also the principal of the elementary school. And she talked to me about uh, coming back to Emmanuel Missionary College to finish my college work instead of going back to um, Atlantic Union College in Massachusetts. And then I did something that I don't know. Looking back at it, I wonder if it was why I even thought of doing it. But when I went back to Massachusetts, I had to decide. And the pastor, uh, we all lived in a big building that they had, the church had bought there. And the church and the Sabbath school rooms and the pastor's uh, apartment and the school teacher's apartment were all in the same building. And he said to me, I'm going to South Lancaster f f today. Do you want to go with me? And I said, all right, yes. And so I went with him, and while he was tending to his, what he had come for, I walked around campus. And I had already on the way down, I guess, was thinking about it. I had already put a proposition to the Lord. I put out a fleece like Gideon. <laughs> and I said, if anybody on campus, this was August, school wasn't on, if anybody on campus speaks to me, says anything to me about coming back, 
I will come back to AUC. Otherwise, I will go back to Michigan. So I walked around and I saw a few people. And finally, down the sidewalk came the registrar. And I said, this is the answer. Oh, hello, Mary. Oh, I'm so glad to see you, and so on, and so on. And, and she said, uh, oh, I don't, oh my, I, I don't have much time to talk. I, I better get on with where, what I'm doing. And so I'll see you uh, maybe later. And she left. She did not say one word about if I were coming back or not coming back. I thought, well, I know Mrs. Kilgore, the head of the English department, and, and she lives just around here. I'll go and talk to her. So I went down the sidewalk to Mrs. Kilgore's house. The door was locked. She was not at home. By that time, it was time for me to meet the pastor. No one had said anything to me about coming back. For me, that answered my question. So I went back to Pittsfield and packed up my things. And one of the young fellows there was coming out here. He had been out here the year before, out to um, Emmanuel Missionary College, and he had taken his first year. And he was didn't know if he was going back. And I said, why aren't you going back? Well, I, haven't collected my, I'll wait till Monday if you'll go back. So I came back here and Miss Alms, the lady who had talked to me about coming back, she said, we'll have a job for you if you come back. So I had to come back early because the job was in the elementary school in they started two weeks before college. So I came back and I was teaching seventh grade math and English until college would start and I'd register for my college classes. Well, as the, I was staying in the dorm, of course, and as the college students began to come back, uh, the girl who had been working in Lampson Hall uh, on campus in the girls' dorm came back. She'd been working in the office, and when she saw me, she said, Oh, Mary, um, I'm glad to see you because there's a letter in the office for you. It came after you'd gone back to Massachusetts, but I knew you were coming back, so I didn't forward it to you. And she went and got the letter. The letter was from Mrs. Kilgore, who had not been home that day I was on campus at AUC. And the letter was asking me to teach part-time in the English department at AUC. I was to teach English for as a second language. If I had received that letter, I would not have come back to Emmanuel Missionary College. Or if I had known how much extra work I would have to take. I had 22 hours more to finish at AUC. But when I came back to Emmanuel Missionary College, I did 40. Therefore, I had a big school bill 
at the end of the year. But again, Massam said, well, don't worry about that. Stay here and teach for us full time. And they'll take something out of your pay every month. We got paid by the month. Every month and uh, till your school bill is paid. So I got my diploma a couple of years later across the business office desk. <laughs> I was there one day probably asking for a little money I had. Anyway, <laughs> Ralph said to me, Mary, do you want this? You can have it now. It's paid for. I said, what is it, Ralph? Your diploma. And he handed me my diploma. Well, I've been here as when Emmanuel Missionary College became Andrews University, and when the demonstration school became Ruth Murdoch Elementary School, and as I'm still on living near campus. And for the last five years, once a week, I go over to the third grade classroom or the fourth grade, or sometimes both, to read to the children. So I'm still <laughs> at the Ruth Murdoch Elementary School. <laughs>